What is going on guys? Welcome to Rob's house. It's been a little bit, been a little short on content recently, but that is about to change. I got a lot of stuff planned. We just got back from Cletus and Cars in Bristol. Had a lot of stuff going on recently, but not a lot of car content. We've been a little slow on that, but don't worry. We are here, we are back. And I got a lot of stuff planned coming up. So first of all, scheduling update. We're gonna start a, a new project today, but coming up, we have LS Fest next weekend. These videos might be posted a little out of order. So we're gonna be going to LS Fest next weekend. I'm going to be vlogging the whole time that I'm there. I'm really, really excited to share that with you guys. Last year was an absolute blast and I'm super, super excited. But this year I'm going all three days. So I'm hoping to capture a lot more content for everybody. Last year's vlog came out good, but I just feel like there's so much to do at LS Fest and I really only scratched the surface. So that is on the menu and coming up, we've got a lot of stuff actually for the Viper. So the Viper actually unfortunately hasn't been featured on the channel in a while, but it is here, it is running, it is good. Ever since I replaced the radiator, this thing has been running like an absolute champion. Now, unfortunately, I am actually still waiting. I was kind of hoping to do like a whole transformation video and make it sort of a surprise for the channel, but I ordered a full aero kit for this car. I ordered it last year, and I understand between supply chain problems, staffing problems, and unfortunately, the owner of the company that I ordered it from getting sick last year, he had some health problems going on. Everyone's stuff from them has been super, super delayed. Trying to be patient, trying to be understanding. Obviously, they have a lot of challenges on their end. Uh, I, did, I have been following up just kind of on a monthly basis, seeing where things are at, and it does look like my stuff should be shipping. I mean, they say soon, but I'm gonna say hopefully conservative estimate by year's end, right? So maybe sometime this winter we'll get to do some of that stuff to the Viper. The stuff I had originally planned for the spring for this car um, should be hopefully getting done this off season. Now what that included was a full aero kit. So a, a fourth generation hood for this car, which will have the three vents on each side with a more aggressive uh, hood scoop. So even though it's an aftermarket hood, it is going to be a Gen 4 style, so it will look OEM, splitter, canards, and a gigantic 72-inch ACR style rear wing to absolutely set the rear end of this car off. So, I mean, you know, one of the iconic features of the Viper, specifically for the Viper ACR, is the massive wing, right? They came like that from the factory. They set lap records at the Nürburgring with that car. Both the Gen 4 ACR, which is eerily similar to my car, uh, and the Gen 5, which, fun fact, they all share the same chassis, but uh, the Gen 4 and Gen 5 are still lap record holders. The Gen 5, I think, is like seventh overall still for the Nürburgring ever, which is absolutely insane. I already shared it on the channel, but as a kid, you know, I always, always, always wanted a Viper, and now that I have one, I really wanted to make it look like that iconic ACR that I always wanted when I was a kid, and now that the car's running right, I'm really excited to put all that stuff on. Now, this brings me to today's video. Now, I have another thing coming up for the Viper pretty soon that I just started ordering parts for. I'm not gonna reveal that yet, but today we're actually gonna get started on something different. So I've been doing some quality of life upgrades for this car. Any of you who are familiar with Vipers or have even just seen a Gen 3 or Gen 4 in person know that the interior is pretty dated. Unfortunately, like the C6 Corvette, they came out around the same time. Both of them did not have the most desirable inter interior quality even back then at that time. You can see on mine, I actually didn't do a video on it, but I put this massive touchscreen head unit in it already, which is cool. That gives me like some Apple CarPlay and stuff. I actually have a tag bracket. I don't know if you could see it there. You can see it there. Tag bracket mounted backup camera. Um, so, which is super useful because even with the rear view mirror, like you can't see anything out of the back of this car. It's actually pretty hard to judge when you're parking because the hood is absolutely massive. So it's super long. So I actually prefer to back it into spaces. Uh, most sports car owners will know, like some, some people think that it, I, I'm not really sure what the, why they think we do it, but we think we're like being jerks when we do it. That's not why we do it. It's usually because if you have a front engine car and all three of my cars fall into this category, the Mustang, the Corvette, and the Viper, they all have very long hoods. So it's actually kind of hard to judge how close you are to something when you're parking. So I actually prefer to back in, that way I can back all the way into the spot and not be sticking out. So the backup camera helps tremendously with the Viper. I mean, the, the, hood, the hood on this car is so long. When you're sitting in the car, it just looks like it never ends. So it's, it's totally impossible to judge. 
uh, and the front end is really really low so if you have like a like a like a curb up ahead or like a parking block or whatever you are likely to destroy that if you if you pull up you know too close so anyway some other stuff that i did already basically all the speakers in this car when i got it were pretty much completely blown out. Uh, this car has seven speakers from the factory. It's got two door speakers. You can see the door, one of the door speakers over there. It has two headrest speakers, one behind each headrest, and it has two tweeters that you can kind of see the screen for this one right here. There is a tweeter in there. And when I got the car, one of my door speakers was completely blown out. The other one still worked. The headrest speakers both worked, but they sounded terrible. And both of the tweeters were totally shot. The tweeters didn't produce sound at all. So uh, it sounded totally horrible. Oh, and the seventh speaker in this car is a factory subwoofer that is located in here. And this thing that says Alpine is actually just a port. There's a hole there. So there are not two speakers there. There's actually only one on the bottom. I know this because I've taken all this stuff apart already and I replaced all the speakers in the car with the exception of the woofer. So the door speakers are brand new, headrest speakers are brand new, and the tweeters are brand new. Now I did that because I just wanted to be able to listen to music in my car, obviously while I'm driving. The problem is I put aftermarket speakers in there and the factory amp is not very powerful. So currently they're pretty underpowered. The door speaker tweeter combination that I got, each can handle about 80 watts RMS. And I think the factory amp is only putting out like 20 to each speaker. So it's definitely an improvement from factory. The factory used really bad speakers in this car. I mean, just really cheaped out. We still have a lot of, a lot of work to do, still a lot of improvements to make. So uh, the headrest speakers, I actually probably will not amplify. I'm kind of, uh, the, the ones that I bought can only handle, I think 40 or 50 watts. And so let me go over what I bought. So I bought an amp. The amp is not here yet, so I can't show you the amp, but it's a five channel SCAR audio amp. Something pretty basic. I didn't need anything fancy. I'm not trying to do any sound competitions or anything like that. I just want to have good quality sounding audio. As, as some of you may know, who've been following the channel for a long time, I'm a musician, so I love listening to music. So I like just having good audio quality in my car. You know, I don't, I, again, I'm not trying to do any competition or any, anything like that. This, this car is a driver. All my cars are drivers. I do have subwoofers in the Mustang. I have a pretty, pretty nice uh, subwoofer setup in the Mustang and the factory sound system in that car is quite good. But even with replacing the speakers, they're a little bit underpowered. So I bought an amp. The amp is a five channel SCAR audio amp. It produces, I think it's 80 watts RMS per the four main channels. And then it has a, a dedicated sub channel that it pumps out, I think 400 watt RMS. If I'm remembering those specs correctly, I'll put a link in the description below. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like their mid tier amp, you know, seems, seems pretty okay. I think it was like 200 bucks. That will power the door speaker. So the four channels are gonna be each door speaker and each tweeter, right? So that's, that's four speakers right there. Uh, because it makes 80 watts RMS, and these kicker uh, headrest speakers that I bought can only handle, I think they can only handle like 40 RMS. I don't wanna overpower them too much. So I think I'm just gonna leave those running off the factory amp. Basically I'll leave them with a the factory wiring harness. It's not a big deal. Um, the main thing is to get the doors, the tweeters, and then obviously we gotta replace that blown out subwoofer, which is really just, honestly, it's really just a 6.5 inch mid-range woofer that they, put a low pass filter on and they treat it like it's a sub, but it's not really a sub from the factory. So I have a solution for that. We got an Alpine Type R here, eight inch sub. Now, according to everyone on the forums, the eight inch will actually drop right into the space where the 6.5 currently lives. The way I've seen people mount it is they actually have to mount it to the bulkhead. So it kind of like, you won't have this screen. The sub will just kind of be sitting there. It'll be, it'll be like basically exposed, but it will fit, so that's good. So we don't have to make any major modifications. We can take that factory box out. I don't know if we mount the eight into the box or just, just directly into the bulkhead. I gotta figure it out when I pull it out. Um, but that will give us a very good quality subwoofer. This subwoofer can handle 350 watts RMS of power. The amp is about 400 watts RMS. Uh, so we'll just be careful with the gain, obviously. And it should sound should sound sound a lot better, obviously. I mean, we'll have a real subwoofer in the car now. And then I have an oxygen-free copper wiring kit here for, uh, this is a six channel four gauge kit. So the amp uses four gauge power and ground wires. Uh, that'll give us plenty of, honestly, it'll probably be overkill. I mean, we're not, the, the whole system is gonna be less than 800 watts RMS, right? So if they're, it's gonna be like barely over 700 watts RMS. So it should be fine. Any of you audio, audio files out there, I mean, 
honestly, this video will probably be pretty boring for you. It's nothing special. Uh, but what I will go over through this process is not just like how I'm gonna mount everything and, and whatnot, but I figured this was a good time to show you how to actually take some stuff apart on the Viper. So um, we're gonna have to take this bulkhead apart, uh, which I've done once before, but I can show you how to do it. We'll take this this whole thing, it surrounds the seat and, and, go, and goes down behind the seat. It's all one giant piece. So we're gonna take that off, which requires that we take these guys off first. Um, the like headrest pillar, I don't even know. They're not even roll bars. I don't know why they really have these things. I guess they're just for looks, but um, we'll pull these off. We'll pull the bulkhead off. In the door, uh, I'm going to have to figure out how I can run the wires to the door speaker. So that might be a little bit tricky. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. So anyway, I'm gonna try to show as much of that as I can for any of the Viper owners out there who wanna upgrade their sound systems because the sound systems in these cars are, are awful. I mean, the, the Gen 5 actually had a pretty decent factory audio system from what I remember of Jamie's old Viper when I rode in it once, but the Gen 3, Gen 4 bad. That's gonna be our next project. The other thing that I need to do is I bought some red LEDs to swap out the halogen bulbs for all the gauges. Um, so I figured that'll go cool with the Mamba theme, kind of have everything black and red. In this video, because I'm gonna have everything apart, because I gotta run the RCAs from the head unit to uh, the amp, which will probably most likely be in the trunk because the battery's in the trunk in this car, I will also show you how to take apart the dash in this car. So I'm gonna show you how to like kind of take apart everything and put it back together. Um, which will help if you want to do, obviously, head unit upgrades, uh, swapping out any of those LEDs, swapping out your tire pressure monitoring computer is actually behind the dash as well. I know because I replaced that already in this car because uh, I had a TPMS light that, I, that even with new sensors I couldn't get to go away. We couldn't program the new sensors because the module was bad. So I will show you how to, how to get to basically all that stuff behind the dash and show you how to, if you want to add an amplifier, what you're going to have to do. So. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so my mission tonight is to figure out sort of a rough idea of how I wanna run all of the wiring for this car. The next thing is we gotta get this bulkhead off. In order to do that, there are these covers here that say Viper, and you can pop them off with just trim removal tools. Um, they're just held on by two clips. And if you look in here, you can see, you see two bolts there. One of them is a Torx bolt that's on the bottom. We don't care about that one. We care about that regular bolt head. And that guy, there's one on each side. There's the one right there that I'm pointing to, right? And then there's one on the inside here as well. There's one behind each, behind each headrest and they hold these guys on. So once you take those two bolts out on each side, these things will slide right out. Once you do that, you can start removing the bulkhead. Now the bulkhead is also pretty simple to remove in this car. Um, you got a screw right here forget if there's a screw under here. Uh, if you pop that trim piece off, you see, so you got a screw here, you got a screw here, and you have one screw right there. And the same is true on the other side. Once you pull all that off, basically both of these guys off and all six of those screws off, the bulkhead will completely lift out. And then we can actually see what we're working with. I'm thinking that we're gonna have to drill some kind of access hole. I might buy some rubber grommets to make that a little neater, but I think we're gonna have to drill some kind of access hole uh, somewhere in here. The carpet is just kind of, the carpet's just Velcroed in in these cars. Uh, so I think I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna see where that stuff would come out through the fender liner. There's nothing on either side of this tub to really get in the way. Kind of hard to describe. I'll have to just get the car in the air and show you guys, but basically the gist of it, if I take the diffuser off, I'll have access to where the battery is actually mounted. I'm going to figure all of that out. Now, with that said, that's probably where I'm gonna leave it uh, tonight. I have my wiring kit, but I don't have my amp yet. And I'm gonna probably, unfortunately, have to do this with the car up in the Air. So I'm gonna map all this out and I'll see you guys in a couple days when I have a chance to actually, it's supposed to rain all week, unfortunately, so if it's storming, I probably won't move them. But when I have a chance to move them, I'll move them and I'll get the Viper up in the air. Um, I'll probably just use my quick jacks to get it up in the air, but still kind of keep it over in the corner over here because it's gonna rain all week and I would like to keep my Corvette parked inside. Small garage problems. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna figure all that out and I'll be right back. All right guys, I made some progress here on my day off. So 
Uh, took apart some stuff. I got the battery panel off here. You can't really see it, but that's the battery cradle. I took the diffuser off so I could get to it. Um, in order to run the wires that I'm going to need to run, I'm gonna have to cut into the trunk somewhere. I haven't decided exactly where yet because I'm waiting for my amplifier to get here this week to figure out sort of like where in the trunk I'm gonna mount it. But I think I'm gonna have to drill a hole like here or here or something to bring wires in both from the battery so I can have the battery cover on and not pinch any of the wires so I could snake them around and also to run to the front of the vehicle. Uh, I ordered a nine conductor wire to do the front speakers with. I may not actually have to go in through the grommets, so we'll see. Uh, another thing that I did was I got the sub mounted. Looks pretty good. It's an eight inch sub. It'll actually fit in that hole that is there for, sorry, my garage is a mess, but that is on the floor is the factory subwoofer box. So I just unplugged that and pulled it out and that left enough space. Um, it's, it is deep enough here. And then basically what I did is the, the hole that this, the ring that this is mounted to, it kind of looks like this where it has a recess because the factory one sits flush. You actually have to, the lip inside that the factory, uh, the factory screen goes on to, uh, mounts onto, uh, you have to cut that out. So basically cut it out with a Dremel, smooth it out with a file. Um, and then the actual ring for the subwoofer, uh, as you can see there, the screws are underneath here. Um, you just go all the way around and mount that sub. Um, on the outside. So instead of it being mounting inside, like in the lip here, it's mounted around the outside. But it is wide enough and it is deep enough to house an eight inch subwoofer. Uh, definitely can't fit anything bigger in there. Uh, a 10 would not fit, the eight is pretty snug in there. But I didn't wanna do a custom box. That's of course the other option would be to have a custom box where you can put like two 10s stacked in the middle like that. I've seen people do that. Looks really cool when people do that, but that was a lot of work and frankly, I'm not experienced enough, I don't think, to do that. I would have to probably hire someone to build, to basically like cut out this center section and mold some kind of fiberglass box in there. So I elected to not do that. Or earlier I described to you how to take these headrest panels off. So if I actually tilt that seat forward, you can see that this is actually totally free. So I'll figure out how to run the wire. Uh, for now, I was just mounting the sub. Wiring next, probably when the amp comes in, I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna drill that hole. I also bought some rubber grommets for wiring that I can fit into whatever size hole that I drill in the trunk. So it'll keep that, basically the tub of the trunk, insulated properly. We'll drill a hole, put a rubber grommet in there, and feed the wires through the rubber grommet. So I'm um, waiting on the grommet, waiting on the amp still, uh, I'm waiting on that nine conductor wire for the main speakers, but I have the wiring kit for the power wire, the fuse, uh, and the RCAs. So that's the other thing. Once we get all that stuff run to the amp in the trunk, the other thing we're gonna have to do is take apart the center console because we need to get behind that head unit to plug all the RCAs into the back of the head unit and also to get to the wires for the front speakers and the subwoofer remote and connect them to that nine conductor wire. So basically we're gonna have one nine conductor snake going from the back of the vehicle to the front of the vehicle to power the fronts. And then we're also going to have speaker wire running uh, from the trunk and terminating at the subwoofer. So that will be uh, how we actually connect the sub to the amp, that'll be a direct connection. Um, all the speakers are Alpine now, with the exception of the headrest speakers or kicker. So the door speakers say Type R on them, sub says Type R, and it's written in red, which matches the seats. So just some like small details there that I think are pretty cool with being consistent. Uh, with the rest of the interior. And, and, the, and Type R is the better line from Alpine anyway. I have Type S subwoofers in the Mustang, and they're great, but the Type R is kind of like their higher tier, better sound quality speaker. It just kind of works out in this car. So I'm, I'm excited for how it's gonna sound. I mean, it should have a pretty, pretty nice sound system when we're done with it. Okay, guys, so I made a little bit of progress here. Amp came today, so I was able to kind of size everything up and figure out how I'm gonna mount it. So I made a board that I can mount into the tubs. Now, I drilled two holes in the tub for running wires on either side of the amp, and then the other additional holes will mount, I already test fitted all of this, but the board will mount there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put the carpeting uh, back over. I've already drilled the pilot holes for 
mounting the amp. So the amp is gonna mount, it's not perfectly lined up, but it's gonna mount kind of like this. But the idea is I wanna have the amp sitting on top of the carpet. So I'm gonna drill some small holes in the carpet and line them up basically with the little mounting holes. You can kind of see the mounting holes for the amp that I already drilled and it should look pretty clean. Um, I have some spacers so I can keep the amp slightly elevated off the carpet for heat dissipation purposes. Um, and then with the uh, large holes that I drilled on each side, I have some rubber grommets coming. They're not here yet, but it'll look all nice and uh, tidy and I can route the wiring through on this side, obviously we need the RCAs um, coming from the head unit. And then on the other side, we're gonna have our power ground and then our um, nine conductor speaker cable. Hopefully they'll fit through that hole. If not, I can widen it a little bit and use a bigger grommet. But uh, at any rate, that's kind of the idea. So let me get it mocked up and, uh, and mount it on the, uh, you know, test fit it on the board and I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, check it out. I got it all mounted up. Uh, there's the ABS board is underneath it. If I feel this back, you can actually see it mounted there to the tub. Tub is made of fiberglass, so easy to drill through. I cut some slits in the side of the carpet on each side, started mocking up what it will look like when it's connected. I had barely enough room on this side to get those RCAs in there, but I got them in there. Amp is like super, I'm like trying to move it and it won't, it's uh, it's pretty stable. I'm probably gonna run, so the battery is here underneath the carpet. Uh, it has a panel that goes over top of it, but basically I think I'm gonna mount the, the fuse to the side of the tub. I'm gonna zip tie the cable onto the main harness cable, which you can't really see. Probably zip tie on this main cable like I have the battery charger. Um, and then it'll come through that hole down there. I don't know if you can really see that, but there's a hole down there that it'll go through. And uh, then I think I'll just run it along here underneath the carpet out to here. There's a hole on, on that side, the ground, because it's short, I have it grounding to the frame. Uh, the brake line is actually drilled. There's a hole uh, in the frame with a uh, sheet metal screw through it um, and what I did was I took that, I took that sheet metal screw out and pulled the brake line back and I put the ground underneath it. So it's smushed in between the metal contacts. It's got like a, a clip for the brake line. It, if you're a car person, you know what I'm talking about. So it's, it's, it's like a clip and it's got two tabs. So when it comes over, you put the screw through the tabs and it holds, it's just a typical brake line clip. I have it underneath that, so it's directly onto the frame rail. So yeah, I'm just waiting on my nine conductor wire for connecting to the speakers, which I'm going to have to run, uh, and that has the remote turn on wire as well. That and the RCAs are gonna have to get run to the head unit. So that's gonna be the other big project is I'm going to have to probably drill behind here, I can drill in. I'm gonna have to drill a hole here behind the driver's seat. That's kind of the downside of this car being a convertible is that there, there's not really anywhere super convenient to run those wires from the battery all the way up to the front. For the people who have coupes, it's easy because you just run it from the trunk, but like, you know, tuck it underneath the carpeting. But with convertibles, a lot of people seem to drill a hole there. So uh, I am off to LS Fest this weekend. Um, if you guys are there and you see me, say what's up. Although this video is probably coming out after LS Fest. I will likely not even get to this until next week. But like I said, I'll, I will release this after the LS Fest video. And I will come back next week and kind of show you where I'm at. Show you the finished product. I'll be back. All right, guys. Viper update. I made some good progress on this, actually. So I um, showed you where I mounted the amp and ran the wires. Let me show you what we got going on here. So you can kind of see the, see the blue wires back there. They run from the battery compartment back there up and along the inside of this frame plate thing. I don't even know what you call it, but um, there's other lines run back there and it keeps it away from the suspension. So I tucked everything back there 
And then I had to drill a hole to get into the cabin because this car is a convertible. So unlike a coupe, it's not easy to get into the cabin. So I drilled a hole and I used a rubber grommet there to kind of seal it up. And then basically, so I've already sort of run it all, but basically I have the sub is actually wired now. That's all hooked up. And then on this side, I have basically the hole is like right behind the seat. You won't, you can't actually see the hole because it's covered by the bulkhead, but it's back here. And basically you could see the gray wire poking out there. I still have to tuck that in. That's our RCA. And then the blue wire, same thing coming out the other side. When all said and done, I'm gonna actually have to pull that seat out because I need to get to the factory amplifier. And the reason for that is coming off the head unit, we're getting an unamplified raw signal going to the factory amplifier. And the factory amplifier has two connections. It has an input, which has come from the head unit, and then it has an output, which actually goes to all the speakers. The green plug is the output. Um, I actually know one of the shop foremen at a local dealership because he helped me with my tire pressure sensor because my module failed when I, and uh, I put a new one in. Like my module was already busted when I bought the car. I put a new one in and he had to help me actually program it. So we spent, because this has an older tire pressure module, it's not like one of the self-learning ones, so it wasn't easy. So long story short, I replaced the module, I came back a second time to the dealership, and it took us an hour or two to figure out how the old system worked because the instructions weren't very good that Chrysler had, and we figured it out. But long story short, I kind of became friendly with the guy. Uh, shout out to, his name's also Rob. Shout out to Rob if you're watching this video. Um, and I just texted him and said, hey, like, do you by any chance have a pinout diagram for the both of these connectors on the amp? I don't know which one's input and which one's output, and I don't know which wires are which, so I need to make sure I'm cutting into the correct ones. But basically what's gonna happen is we wanna bypass the factory amplifier for the speakers that we're gonna be amplifying, which remember are not gonna be all of them because those headrest speakers, I'm not amplifying those, so we're not gonna touch those. But the front doors and tweeters both are gonna need to be cut from what was previously the output plug and run the output of my new amplifier into those wires to send to the speakers, basically. Basically, so I don't have to run all new wiring throughout the car. It'll actually save me a good amount of time just soldering into the existing harness. He shot me over a pinout diagram, so I know it's the green connector is the amplified outputs going to all the speakers, and the diagram had which speakers were which. So we'll go over that when I actually pull the seat out. But long story short, uh, have all the wires run now. Uh, so all I'm gonna do for the rest of tonight, I think, before I call it a night, is I'm gonna start hooking the amp up, start doing like the, the connections at the amplifier, and then probably put fender liner back on, the wheel back on, you know, just kind of get the car uh, sort of reassembled so we can start taking apart the dash. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I am not going to be able to get this seat out with the car up against the wall the way I have it now. I just don't have enough room to do that. So I will probably save that for another day. The weather is supposed to be nice for the rest of the week. So one of these days after work, I will likely um, move the Corvette out and kind of shimmy the Viper over so that I have better access to the passenger side of the vehicle. We can pull the seat out and finish up the install. Short update but uh, for the night, but that's gonna be my project for tonight. I am probably not going to show that because there's nothing really to show. It's just gonna be plugging the connections into the amp, which is covered just by the carpeting right now, and um, uh, putting the fender liners and the wheel back on. So once that's all done and tidy, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, guys, I'm wrapping it up for tonight. Got the fender liner and wheel reinstalled. Like I said, all the wires are run up front now for me to complete the installation. And uh, I haven't actually connected the uh, power wire back here yet, but I'm going to mount the fuse kind of against the side of the tub. You're not gonna be able to see it at this angle, but I'm gonna mount that on the side of the tub. Uh, zip tie everything up nice and neat. I'm not gonna connect the power wire tonight I'll probably connect the power wire at the very end when I'm ready to actually button everything up for now I did all of the wiring for the amp. So I have the amp all buttoned up here Here's that nine conductor wire that I was saying I ordered uh, And then on the end we have the subwoofer connection. So that's a separate wire uh, that I ran to the subwoofer so we have all five channels connected uh, power ground and remote wire connected 
and then uh, on this side we have the RCA connections. Then it has the uh, crossovers, gain, all that stuff that I'm gonna have to play with uh, later once I actually have the speakers connected. But anyway, the amp looks nice and neat. Came out pretty much exactly as I envisioned. I tried to hide the wires as best as I possibly could uh, under the carpeting uh, using those two holes that I drilled on either side. I think it looks pretty neat. Um, and I still have some trunk space, although yes, some things would potentially be up uh, against the amp, but if I actually like push this down, like you could very easily put a backpack over here. Um, and honestly, you could kind of like stand a backpack up on its side probably and, you know, still have a decent amount of trunk space for doing a mountain drive or something like that um, while having an updated audio system. All right guys, quick update here. I have begun the process of disassembling the dash. I went ahead and actually took the entire uh, bezel off because I'm also gonna replace the LEDs uh, in my gauge cluster, it still has the factory ones. They're not even LED actually, they're just like regular halogen bulbs, but I have some red LEDs to put in there. So I'm gonna put it uh, in the gauge cluster and in the side gauges. Uh, so I figured this was the perfect opportunity basically to do that. So uh, I'm gonna do that. Then we'll pretty much be done with the exception of wiring in to the factory amp and then we can test this out. Whew, all right guys, that was that was a productive night in the garage. Anyway, the uh, dash is back together. Uh, we now have, it's kind of cool, I could show you. Now I have red gauges. I don't know how well that comes through on camera, but that'll go nicely with the Mamba interior theme, of course. Everything's reconnected. RCAs are hooked up to the back of the head unit now. The only thing remaining now is to tie this guy. This is our nine conductor wire so we're gonna splice into the wires for the front doors the front tweeters and then the remote turn on for the amp and then we'll be able to test the system now the problem is in order to do that I, like i said i have to remove the passenger seat so we'll come back later in the week i'm calling it for tonight this was i guess night three of me working on this and we're back and the car's done so check it out got the seat out and went ahead and wired this up so this particular wire that is spliced in this is actually uh, the head unit 12 volt signal that actually kicks the amp on. So I spliced into that for the remote wire for the amp in the back. I soldered into, basically these are the amplified outputs. I clipped the corresponding ones out of the wiring harness and wired them to my amp instead. And those are four speakers. So it's eight wires, positive and negative, and it corresponds to both tweeters and both door speakers. And then if I come back here, show you the amp, everything is nice and neat. This wire will get hidden by the seat when I put the seat back in. And we got the sub mounted in the middle. I just tested it and it sounds great. Anyway, yeah, system works, sounds good. I'm gonna button everything up and I'll show you guys what it looks like when all said and done. All right guys, I got everything all buttoned up, back together. Sub looks nice and clean installed there. Overall, I consider it a success. Guys, one thing, a PS on the video, one thing that I did not anticipate uh, and totally should have foreseen. You gotta plug the hole for what used to be the subwoofer port because I'm not using the box back there anymore. It's just open space. There was a lot of phase cancellation issue and the sub actually sounded terrible when I cranked it up. Uh, so what I did was, it's drying right now, it looks kind of bad, but um, basically epoxy. So on the back I have some heat shield sealing it up and then there's a piece of foam wedged in between the heat shield and this piece of ABS plastic that I cut out and epoxied inside of there. Looks kind of shoddy, but it actually worked great. I just tested it and I'm, I'm just gonna let it dry and then I'll put that screen on it so you won't even be able to see all that stuff once it's covered up and should be good to go. So anyway, just wanted to mention that for anyone who is adding a sub and is going to delete the factory sub box. So you can see my sub box over here on the floor. If you are going to be deleting that, make sure that you plug up the subwoofer hole. Otherwise you're, you're gonna fire everything up and you're just gonna wonder why your audio system sounds terrible. So anyway, that's it as usual. Hope this video is entertaining. Hope this video is helpful. See you guys next time. So reach for the stars, cause we're